dreams to purpose. Listen carefully. By a show of hands, how many of us are not living out our childhood dreams? If statistics be true, then only 4% of individuals are living out their childhood dreams. Are we societies unsuccessful due to not accomplishing our childhood desires? My name is Michael Hollins, and I serve as the Assistant Athletic Director for Student Success and Leadership here at John Carroll. For as long as I can remember, I dreamt of playing in the National Football League. This is a picture of me in my Cleveland Browns uniform, and that's the professional team here in Cleveland. I loved everything about the game of football. I loved the emotion when it came to football. I even love the smelly locker rooms. I love the competition that football aroused. I love the light that football gave to my otherwise bleak world. From day one, I wanted to become legendary. I would visualize myself, you know, scoring and the officials and I both signaling touchdown. I would visualize myself giving Pro Football Hall of Fame speeches. If I were to drop my pencil in class, I would jump on it and yell out, fumble. <laughs> it was that childlike infatuation that caused me to relate all of my everyday routines to the game of football. Football meant everything to me. But one of the key things I learned when it came to football is about life. And again, only 4% of individuals are living out their childhood dream, which is so important for us to think about. You know, football taught me so much, and I was really exposed because of this game called football. I was exposed to good people. I had a coach who taught me so much, and I called him my life coach. He taught me so much about life. He was my youth wrestling coach, though. And he would take us on different tournaments in hopes of exposing us to a different way of living. At these tournaments, he would even sometimes feed us. And yes, I said sometimes because this was wrestling, so, you know, we had to make weight. But ultimately, being exposed to Coach Richie being a good person meant the world to me. Secondly, I was exposed to a growth mindset. Carol Dweck writes in her book, Mindsets, the difference between a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. A growth mindset says, it doesn't matter what my baseline is, through practice and repetition, I can get better. A fixed mindset says, if I don't just have the it factor, there's nothing I can do to develop and grow. Lastly, I was taught to show grace to others. You know, when you show grace to others, it really brings out something in you. My senior year, I should not have graduated a class, which would have forced me to stay another semester. My college professor extended grace to me, and in that moment, it showed me I wanted to extend grace to others. I have to give you a timeline of my football career. You know, in middle school, I played for a great team. We went undefeated. My junior year of high school, we went to the state championship. Now, after that, I trained hard and became one of the top players in the state of Ohio. We finished with the trophy story. We went 15 and 0. My group of friends and I visited some of the most prestigious schools this country has to offer from UNC Chapel Hill to the University of Southern California. Due to underperforming both academically and athletically, I wound up playing Division II football. In my young mind, I thought that, you know, because I was a Division I recruit playing at the Division II level, it would be easy. I left for college August 13th. My birthday is August 14th and my father passed away August 31st. My father was the closest person to me. He was like my best friend. And when he passed away, I stopped playing football. I isolated myself from people. 
I struggled socially. I stopped going to class, I struggled academically. I was no longer playing football, I struggled physically. Yes, I was on scholarship, but they weren't giving away money as they do now, so I still struggled financially. Ultimately, I struggled holistically. So now what? I was at risk, all odds were against me, I was fighting for my future, yet drowning in life. But when I look back over my life, by the grace of God, I was provided the right resources to close the wilderness gap. I mentioned earlier the three things that I was exposed to, so I won't be redundant and saying them again. But being exposed to good people, a growth mindset, and extending grace to others really helped me grow. Now, I mentioned earlier I quit playing football at my first university. I did get another opportunity to play football here at John Carroll University where I earned three times first team all-conference honors, two times first team all-region honors, and first team all-American honors. And bouncing back, it meant so much to me. I even got the chance at my childhood dream. Following my senior year, I got an opportunity to work out in front of NFL scouts. I trained extremely hard and I did not perform the way I thought I would because I popped my foot during warm-ups. My entire life I worked for that moment, but I had a decision to make. Do I stop or do I fight through and try to accomplish my dream? Well, you fight through and try to accomplish your dream. But again, I didn't run well. So I went back to my hometown where I worked as a paraprofessional and not a professional athlete. In my mind, I thought when I would go back to my hometown, I would be in the NFL and I would speak maybe once or twice a year, you know, do the kiss baby, shake hands type deal, and then go on with my life. I never thought I would work there full time. At that time, I coached middle school football. And those middle school students showed me my purpose, which was more important than running fast, jumping high, and catching the ball. It was more important to shape them in being young men of integrity. And I loved every part of it. Again, they showed me my purpose, my reason for existence. Romans 8:28. And we know that God causes all things to work together for the good of them who love God and are called according to his purpose. You know, in that time, I was low. I didn't know what to do. Because I was hurt, of course I wanted to be in the NFL, but I was finding this new thing that I loved, which included serving people. When you're in those low moments in life, the most important thing you can do is seek the source. Ask God to reveal to you through his word what he's trying to show you in this season of your life. We can't always dwell on the past and what we used to do. We have to be able to move forward. But secondly, serve someone. Dr. Martin Luther King said, everybody can be great because everybody can serve. Oftentimes, we're so caught up in ourselves that we're missing what God is trying to do through us. But finally, simply strategize. Come up with a plan and then execute. You are not a failure if you aren't in the 4% of individuals that do not accomplish their childhood dreams. You are a failure if you do not use your experiences to help you help others accomplish their purpose. Remember, remember Romans 8.28. And we know that God causes all things to work together for the good of them who love God and are called according to his purpose. Thank you, and that's my time.